So let's take a look at this proof question here. So part I says we need to prove that for all values of n uh, contained within, and this means the natural numbers, so the natural numbers, n squared plus 2 is not divisible by 4. And this is for 4 marks. So first we're just going to look through and try and decode the question. So we can see here, okay, so we've got this. And this means the natural numbers, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4 etc. Now there are lots of different methods of proof, however looking at the question you try and work out which one would be best. For example one of the methods is proof by counterexample, uh, but looking at this we couldn't do that because what it says in the question is we need to prove for all n, uh, so we couldn't use a counterexample because that would just be for one particular case. And there are lots of other methods we could think about to see if it will fit. However the one that fits here is proof by exhaustion. And the reason for this is because we need to prove for all values of n. And what we're not going to do is plug in every single possible value and see if it's visible by 4. Because that's not impossible, there's infinitely many values. So we need to be a bit more clever about this. So a way we could categorise the natural numbers is as odd and even. So we're going to see what happens for an odd number and see what happens for an even number. So we start by looking at for when n is even. And when n is even, we've got a way of writing this. We can say that let n equals 2k. So k being any constant, because if you multiply something by 2, it's always going to be even. So we're just going to see what happens when we plug in an even number. So we're going to say n squared plus 2 equals, okay, so we're letting n be 2k, so that's 2k all squared plus 2, which equals 4k squared plus 2. And this is good, because this actually proves that when n is an even number, it's not divisible by 4. And the reason is because here we've got 4 multiplied by some value k squared plus 2. We know that this part is divisible by 4 because 4 multiplied by anything is always divisible by 4. However, then we've got plus 2 afterwards. So something that's divisible by 4, then we're going to add 2 on, which isn't divisible by 4. So we know our overall result isn't going to be divisible by 4. Writing this out as an explanation, we can say, so when n is even n squared plus 2 is not divisible by 4 since it's 2 more than a multiple of 4 and 2 isn't divisible by 4. So what we now need to do is try for when n is odd. So for when n is odd and um, we're going to let n equal. Now if an even number is 2k an odd number will just be one more than an even number so 2k plus 1. So that means that n squared plus 2 equals 2k plus 1 squared plus 2, which equals, so we'll get 4k squared plus 4k plus 1 plus 2. And here what we can do is factorise out of 4. So we get 4 multiplied by k squared plus 4. And then combining the constants, we get plus 3. And we see this also, uh, we've proved, is not divisible by 4. Because like in the previous example, this term here, is divisible by 4, since it's something multiplied by 4. However, we're adding 3 on top of that, which isn't divisible by 4. So we know overall, this won't be divisible by 4. And for my explanation here, I've uh, just copied out the same explanation as before, but just changed it to say that when n is odd, and it's not divisible by 4, since it's 3 more than a multiple of 4, and 3 isn't divisible by 4. So here that we've proved, uh, because we've looked at both even numbers, and odd numbers. So for any natural number, um, n, um, n squared plus 2 is not divisible by 4. So bringing this all together, we can say that because n is not divisible by 4, when n is odd and when n is even, this means that n squared plus 2 is not divisible by 4 for any n contained within the natural numbers. So looking to see where we get the 4 marks, um, we get 1 mark for this step here, so testing for when n is even. And um, we get another mark uh, for our explanation here. And then we get another mark for testing when it's odd. And then we get the final mark for our conclusion both here and also our just general conclusion uh, saying that this means that n squared plus 2 is not divisible by 4 for any n, which is a natural number. So now we're going to take a look at part 2 of this question. So given that x and contained within, and this means the real numbers, um, the value of the modulus of 3x minus 28 is greater than or equal to the value of x minus 9. You need to state giving a reason if the above statement is always true, sometimes true, or never true. And this is for two marks. 
So firstly, just looking at here in the question, it says that x is contained within the real numbers. Um, so the real numbers are just anything that could be represented on a number line. Um, so for example, 1, 3.5, square root of 5, anything like that is all a real number. Now essentially what the statement is saying is that the modulus of 3x minus 28 is greater than or equal to the value of x minus 9. And we need to state whether this statement is always true, sometimes true, or never true. Now there are a few different approaches we could take to this, but I think a graphical approach will work really well. Now I've drawn out a set of axes here, and what we're first going to sketch is, we're going to say that y1 equals the modulus of 3x minus 28. And whenever you're sketching something that's a modulus, it's a good idea to think about it without the modulus sign first, and then we can introduce that. So imagine this without the modulus sign, we're going to sketch y equals 3x minus 28. So the y-intercept is going to be minus 28. Um, so it's going to be somewhere somewhere down here at minus 28. And then just take a quick look to work out where the x-intercept will be. Um, so if we set y1 to be 0, we've got 0 equals 3x minus 28. So 3x equals 28. And x equals 28 over 3. Uh, which is around 9.3. So I'm just going to put that somewhere roughly here. Uh, so you're going to say that's 28 over 3. So if I draw that here. So this is the line y equals 3x minus 28. However, we don't have that. We've got y equals the modulus of 3x minus 28. So this means that anything below the x-axis, you need to essentially flip up here. It's going to flip up to create a v-shape like this. And this point is just a reflection. So we've got minus 28 here. So it's going to be positive 28 here. So we've got 28 here. And I'm going to get rid of all of this down here. So now we're going to focus on the x minus 9. So I'm going to use a different color for this. And um, we're going to say that y2 equals x minus 9. Firstly, looking to see at the y-intercept, well, that's going to be minus 9. Um, so I'm going to sketch that on about here to say minus 9 there. And then working out the x-intercept, um, if we set y2 to equal 0, we get 0 equals x minus 9. So x equals 9. And 28 over 3 is actually 9.3 reoccurring. Um, so we're just going to be a little bit before that. So if I put that here, um, let's say that equals 9. If I join up those points, we now have the line y2 equals x minus 9. Now we've just uh, quickly sketched that, but one check you can do when you do a rough sketch like this is we can see here we've got a gradient of 3 and here we've got a gradient of 1. Um, and this makes sense because we've got a steeper gradient here and a shallower gradient here. Um, so just make sure that the gradients are the right way around and that's a good sign that you're on the right track. So now we've done all this sketching, we're going to look back um, to the question and look at the statement again. So the value of the modulus of 3x minus 28 is greater than or equal to the value of x minus 9. I mean to say whether that's always true, sometimes true, or never true. Well, we'll look at the graph, we can clearly work this out. Between this point here and this point here, the value of x minus 9 is actually greater than or equal to at these points than the modulus of 3x minus 28. However, outside of these points, so all the areas over here, the value of the modulus of 3x minus 28 is actually greater than x minus 9, as you can see here. So we can see that sometimes the modulus of 3x minus 28 is greater than x minus 9. And some points, the value of x minus 9 is greater than the modulus of 3x minus 28. And at some points here, it's actually equal. So therefore, we know that it is sometimes true. So writing a concluding statement here, we can say, therefore... The statement is sometimes true since there are points where the modulus of 3x minus 28 is less than x minus 9 and points where the modulus of 3x minus 28 are greater than x minus 9. So look at the mark scheme. We get one mark um, for the graph like this and accurately having the V shape here and the line here and it intersecting and creating this area here. And then part of the same mark, we needed to state that it's sometimes true. And then we get the second and final mark for the rest of our explanation here.